Hi everyone, welcome to a godly home. I am using my new laptop to record this entire video. We'll see how this turns out. Today's video is going to be part of the collaboration going on at City Girl Homestead and it is hashtag holidays on a dime. Now I did a video for that collaboration yesterday and it was of me baking some cookies and I shared some frugal tips of different things I was doing while I was baking, but I still have so many more frugal tips on holiday cooking and keeping your food in a very low budget that I thought maybe I would just do this video just specifically talking about the subject because it's too much for me to actually show all of it. Um, a few of the things will be repeated um, from the baking video but not everybody will watch the baking video. Some people will just watch this one. So I'll be looking at my notes and here we go. 10 plus ways to save hashtag holidays on a dime. Okay, and we are specifically talking about food. Number one, use what you already have. This is such a big one. So many times during the holidays, my husband would get laid off or his hours would get cut and it really super surprised me how I could rummage through the whole house and very quickly come up with some things that I knew were going to make delicious desserts and main dishes and stuff like that without buying anything, just like a complete scrounge holiday dinner and it was always good um, so use what you already have number two make sure you're saving on all of your groceries and if you're not sure how to do that I put out that video last week my top 10 ways to save on groceries but make sure you're saving on all of your groceries not just your holiday menu because anything you save is going to help with your holiday menu and anything else you might be buying make sure you're getting the best price you can on gifts and stuff so it gives you some money for that holiday menu number three when you're baking do not hesitate to substitute the more expensive ingredients for less expensive ones like using margarine in place of butter using vegetable oil um, recipes that call for vegetable oil um, using shortening recipes that call for shortening so like if you're going to make brownies look at some of the different recipes some may call for a whole bunch of um, butter and like those chocolate baker squares Whereas another one might just call for a cup of vegetable oil and three tablespoons of Baker's cocoa powder. So take a look at that when you're planning on what you're going to make. Take the time to look at a few different recipes because you can always find some recipes for the same thing that use cheaper ingredients. Um, number four, make sure on your flavorings if you need to buy some, use the imitation because they're going to be cheaper. Um, Dollar Tree has a lot of the imitation flavorings. I know they at least have lemon, almond, and vanilla there. And they might have some other ones too, depending on which Dollar Tree you're shopping at. Same with the Amish stores. They have like maple and peppermint and some of those more unique ones, fairly inexpensive um, if you already have flavorings that aren't imitation use what you have okay um, number five use half of things when you can half the nuts half the chocolate chips um, really stretch <laughs> those extra ingredients if it's dried fruit use half of what it calls for 
Um, number six, water down your milk. Um, we mentioned that in the video where I was baking the cookies. If you're buying whole milk, canned milk, 2% milk, you can water that down at least by half and nobody's going to notice. And that really stretches your ingredients. Um, if you have a lot of dried milk, mix up some dried milk and use that too for baking. It makes everything light and fluffy and you might have some that's close to the expiration date and you might as well use it. Um, number seven, if you are giving out some of these treats as gifts, which that's a super frugal gift idea and people love that stuff because people aren't doing a lot of home cooking anymore. Um, put the items, let's say it's cookies, into containers that you already have, containers that they don't need to return. Um, get creative with that. Here's a few things that I've used in the past. You can clean out reusable boxes like those fruit cups, the 12 packs of them. They come in the nicest little box and I will reuse those for giving out cookies and treats and stuff. I line them with wax paper. Um, shirt boxes, you know, like the ones that you wrap Christmas gifts in, those all white or Christmas themed shirt boxes. They're like three to a pack or something at the Dollar Tree. Those are great for cookies. You can get quite a few cookies in there. If they don't have to return it, you might already have some of those. Um, Pringles cans or the Lay's stackable chip cans, same idea. Those are excellent. You can stack cookies right up in those. Just make sure they're washed out good. Um, a plastic coffee can, wash it out good. Make sure it doesn't smell like coffee. That would be great for like Chex Mix or something like that you might want to give out. The brown paper lunch sacks, those are wonderful. I use those all the time when I'm sending treats with my guys for their co-workers. I put their name on the brown lunch sack, put their treat in there, staple it shot, and you can get a big pack of those at Dollar Tree. Um, the cocoa powder container that your cocoa powder comes in, like the Hershey's plastic one with the lid or the Nestle's one, rip the label off, wash it out, make your own label. I've done that for like chocolate dipped pretzels, you know, the little pretzels, not the rods. Um, drink mix containers like uh, Gatorade or Tang or the tall, narrow crystal light containers. Any of those are fantastic to make your own label for and put any treats in there that fit. I've done that. Of course, just a Ziploc bag or a sandwich, fold over sandwich bag. I will tie a sandwich bag with like an individual cookie or whoopie pie or something with just a piece of curly ribbon or natural twine on it and it looks fantastic. And I always have both of those on hand, the Ziplocs or the uh, sandwich bags. Um, so get creative with that. If you think of any more containers you can put that kind of stuff in for gift giving, leave me a comment down below. Um, number eight, do not experiment with new recipes that nobody you know has ever made because you can't afford when you're on a tight budget to make that and find out there was something wrong with that recipe or it wasn't really all that good. Um, I did say look through your recipes and find the cheapest version. But like for me, if I'm looking through my cookbooks to find the cheaper recipe, I've probably already made all of those recipes. But if you haven't, then check with somebody, say, on YouTube or a family member or something say, hey, I'm looking for a brownie recipe that uses only vegetable oil and cocoa powder. Do you have a good one? Because that would be terrible if you used 
the small budget that you had through the holidays on a recipe that nobody's tried and it didn't turn out very well. Um, number nine, pick recipes that the ingredients can be used other ways. So like if you get a package of chocolate chips, you know, use recipes that are going to use all of that. If you're going to only use half of a package per recipe because you're stretching them, then you can pick two recipes that require chocolate chips. Um, same with your nuts, your dried fruits, anything, M&Ms, Christmas M&Ms, anything you're going to be using. I'm thinking of Christmas M&Ms because um, Maria, most of you know Maria from the channel, if you've been with me for a while, uh, she just bought a big thing of Christmas M&Ms from Sam's Club. And just quickly off the top of my head, I'm thinking M&M cookies, like trail mix, nuts, dried fruit, M&Ms. You know, it could just be nuts, raisins, and M&Ms. Um, there's two things right there. I'm sure you guys can think of more. Excuse me. <coughs> so... You know, think that way about stuff. Um, oh, they could be put on top of Rice Krispie squares, pushed in on the top, you know, to make them colored. Um, some of those things where you like fill a sack with only red M&Ms and make it look like a Santa um, in a treat bag. There's so many things that you can do with the mul using an ingredient multiple ways. Um, number 10. This is a big one. Um, you never need as much food as you think. Like you think, oh, I need all this. Through the years, let me tell you, we started off with what we thought we needed for Christmas food. And it was ridiculous. It was like everything my family always had, plus everything Corey's family always had. We couldn't eat it all. The next year we said, oh, we're not doing that. We're going to cut back. This is no joke. We have been doing that for 20 years and we still have a ridiculous abundance of food on the holidays. You really don't need as much as you think you do. Be very realistic when you're on a tight budget about how much you actually need, how much variety and how much of each thing. You know, a lot of times during the holidays, I think I need to peel and mash 20 pounds of potatoes. I don't. I do not. Um, this year, I cut all the way back to five pounds of potatoes, and we still had a ton of leftover potatoes. Um, and the zero food waste, this will be my bonus one. Um if you have anything left over make sure it gets used if you have to pop something into the freezer if you have to recreate something into something else you know we just don't want to let any of this food go to waste with the price of groceries and everything's just going so high that we need to cut our cost as much as we can Okay, that is all I have for you, and you guys just keep requesting these frugal videos. I said I was only going to do them if they were requested, and since I made that statement, the requests just keep coming. I have another request for a frugal topic that I'm going to be doing in January, so this has been a fun collaboration, and I love that um, it's on frugalness and helping people to save money at Christmas. So make sure you check out the playlist over at City Girl Homestead. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you can, join us for Testimony Thursdays live at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye.